planning and zoning meeting tonight on uh, December the 11th, 14th. I'm way behind. <laughs> 2010. <clears throat> Please stand for the invocation and pledge by Coach Williams. My gracious Father in heaven, again, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to meet. We thank thee for this past year that you watched over us and you granted us wisdom and knowledge and understanding to carry out the duties for which you've been assigned our hands. We thank thee for this season, Lord, that which we are celebrating, your birthday. We thank you for all of your mercy and your kindness. We ask a special blessing for young men and young women who in harm's way today to see that we maintain our freedom. We ask you to bless them and their families through this holiday season. And continue to bless this board and bless this staff. And grant us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to do that which is pleasing in your sight. This we offer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Christy. <clears throat> Chair John Duhon. Here. Mr. Jake Porsche. Here. Mr. LaSalle Williams. Here. Mr. Harold Doucette. Here. Mr. David Connor. Here. Mr. Whit Baker. Here. Mr. Gary Navarre. Here. Mr. Ray Taylor. Here. Ms. Betty Brown. Here. Ms. Latricia Cobb. Here. And Mr. Elijah Gill. Here. All present. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Smith's here also. I see. Y'all excuse how I look. I've been hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you was talking about. I thought you was talking about your your, your hair or something. <laughs> Clothes you was Don't talking about. Some quick. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> This is an 11 member board. It will take a majority of those members present to grant or deny any request heard tonight. Zoning exceptions and variances are final tonight. Zoning cases will go before the police jury on Thursday in the same room at 5.30 p.m. Uh, <clears throat> anyone wishing to speak? Can I have that blue card, please? Fill out a blue card back in the back. You'll approach the mic up here. State your name and address and the nature of your request. Uh, but everyone, please turn off all cell phones at this time, including me. <clears throat> The first item on our agenda is to take appropriate action on the extension case of EX01-032-07, a request by Mark and Helen Johnson for a zoning exception to allow extension of an existing bar pit six months at 2451 Sutherland Road in Ward 1. The petitioner's property is located in Moss Bluff and it encompasses 10 acres of R1 single family residential zone property. The petitioners would like to request an extension to an existing borrow pit and that extension would be for six months and the request has come about after the petitioners purchased the property from David and Wendy Foreman and the Foremans received approval for this dirt pit in 2007 and they dug approximately 80 percent of the dirt out of the dirt pit and so now the new owners the Johnsons would like to have the 20 percent that remains on site be hauled off to a nearby subdivision to fill in some low lots the staff recommends that the request be granted with the customary stipulations I'd like to read those for the record that the extraction and hauling be performed from daylight to dusk only that the extraction is performed in accordance with the site plan on file that the contractor will take necessary steps to maintain dust control and prevent spillage that the contractor shall not haul during inclement weather, that the developer will obtain a local permit prior to hauling, that the exception will be subject to any requirements of the police jury regarding weight limits, that the pond not be backfilled, that the development adhere to a stormwater plan that includes best management practices, and that said stormwater plan be submitted and proposed measures be in place prior to permit issuance, 
that notice of intent for application for a Louisiana pollution discharge elimination system permit through the Department of Environmental Quality be submitted prior to development permit issuance and that the extension is for six months or when the excavation is complete, whichever comes first. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Any questions or comments? Approval. I got a motion for approval for Mr. Doucet and a second for Mr. Gilry. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. <coughs> Next item on is take appropriate action on case EX04 030 10. A request by Anthony and Denise Matthews for a zoning exception to allow eighth dwelling on one lot, a manufactured home at 1633 West Burton Street in Ward 4. Ms. Wallace. The petitioner's property is located west of Sulphur and it encompasses approximately 50 acres of A1 agricultural zone property and the petitioners would like to allow the eighth dwelling on this lot where uh, their son would move a 2006 16 by 80 manufactured home onto the property for his residence. Uh, the property is actually large enough and has um, enough road frontage to accommodate this number of dwellings but since this would be the third manufactured home on the property it's our policy to bring that bring that to the board so that's why we're here tonight so right now on the property there's two duplexes that are used for rental purposes there's one house that the petitioner resides in and there's two manufactured homes that are both uh, lived in by the petitioner's sons the staff recommends that the request be granted with the stipulation that the development adhere to the site plan on file and that the manufactured home be skirted prior to utilities being connected thank you Ms. Wallace any questions or comments Anyone? Yes, Mr. Connor. Um, this issue would not be so much of an issue for them if they, this, with so many homes on one lot, this property was subdivided, I'm guessing. Right. They could legally subdivide it, but they would have to come through the, the appropriate process for that also if they went that route. Okay, and there's a point at which um, so many manufactured homes, I'm guessing you're bringing that up, becomes a, considered a park? Yes, three or more. So this will become a park. Well, if, if we had rezoned the property, yes, but um, rezoned the property, it would. But typically, since it's just family, it, it's our policy within the office to at least bring it to a public hearing, but not to rezone it. Motion for approval. Is, is there someone in the audience representing the family? Could you please step to the mic and state your name and address? <coughs> And actually, it's my mother that's been moving in the mobile home, not my son. It was a misprint. And your address, please? 1633 West Burton. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Uh, our, I guess you heard the conversation. I think the question is, or the concern is, that when you start placing so many mobile homes on a given acreage, like I said, it starts constituting a mobile home park. And uh, while you have 50 acres in there, three, so, so what happens with the, when you come up here for the next family member? You see what I mean? It's, it's, this thing is kind of growing. That's why the concern. Would you address that, please? Um, actually, we don't plan on even putting this one here, but my mother had to have somewhere to move her mobile home to. Okay. Any questions or comments of Ms. Matthews? We have a motion yet? No, no, sir. Uh, thank you. Or we motion just for made a motion. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear. I didn't. A second. Okay, I got a motion from Ms. Brown and a second from Mrs. Cobb. Uh, let's do a roll call vote, please. <clears throat> Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Doucette? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Chair Duhon? Yes. Mr. Porsche? Yes. Ms. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Navarre? Yes. And Mr. Gilney? Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. <coughs> Next is to take appropriate action on case <coughs> EX08 031 10, a request by Roy and Sylvia Dugas for a zoning exception to allow a bar pit one acre on Denison Road in Ward 8. Ms. Wallace. This property is located north of Iowa and it encompasses about 40 acres of A1 agricultural zone property. 
and the petitioners had obtained a permit in July of this year to construct a pond on the property and that pond was recently completed and um, just for the audience at home a pond is where the dirt remains on site and so the petitioners used some of the excavated dirt to build their house pad, house pad but what's left over they would now like to have removed from the site and that's where we run into um, borrow pit regulations so they're before you tonight requesting the zoning exception to allow a borrow pit and the staff recommends that the request be granted but uh, our stipulations are a little bit different uh, we'd like to stipulate that the dirt removal and hauling be performed from daylight to dusk only that the dirt removal is performed in accordance with the site plan on file that the contractor take necessary steps to maintain dust control and prevent spillage that the contractor not haul during inclement weather that the developer will obtain a local permit prior to um, hauling that the exception will be subject to any requirements of the police jury regarding weight limits that the pond not be backfilled and upon issuance of a development permit the exception is for six months or when the dirt removal is complete whichever occurs first Thank you. Ms. any questions or comments motion for approval. Second. I got a motion from Mrs. Cobb and a second from Mr. Navarro all in favor state aye, aye. opposed passes unanimously Next number eight, take appropriate action on case VA 04-014-10, a request by David and April Brown for a zoning variance to allow two dwellings on one lot, a manufactured home at 502 Phillips Road in Ward 4. Ms. Wallace. This property is located near Westlake and encompasses just under a half acre of R2 mixed residential property as well as C1 light commercial. And uh, at this time, there is a single family house on the property and the petitioners would like to move a 2006 14 by 64 manufactured home on the property and both of these homes would be rental units the staff does recommend that the request be denied um, the petitioner does own some property adjacent to this site that is zoned properly for a manufactured home and um, he's chosen to move forward with this request for that one tract of land so we do ask that it be denied but if you all grant the request we would like that you stipulate that the development adhere to the site plan on file and that the manufactured home must be skirted prior to utilities being connected. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Any questions or comments before I call the applicant up? Would someone representing the Browns please step forward, state your name and address. Uh, Davin Brown, address 2913 Ferndale Drive, Westlake. Mrs. Wallace stated that you had enough land to do this without coming before us, but you did want to place it back there. Would you um, elaborate on that, please? Well, yes, I investigated that, and the septic system environmental department uh, said that that property was not adequate for putting a residence on, that it wouldn't be allowed to be developed, and they gave different reasons. Basically, uh, no road frontage <clears throat> and that they said if there was a change to the property that there would be no grandfathering so that we couldn't use a grandfathering clause so they said the only other stipulation I had was to put it on the front property and uh, install it there and then that's the way I got the uh, septic system permit approved they actually approved putting it there versus in the back and of course in the back is also an issue it's a, it's a flood zone back there it does it's not marked but it uh it's flood multiple times in that area <clears throat> thank you mr brown any questions or comments? <clears throat> mr brown is that considered to be a wetland according to that i don't think it's considered to be a wetland but within feet of it is a wetland i mean it's that the back part not the part i'm considering placing the property now i did uh just for uh my own sake i did do some research to get some go bys so that I so I didn't seem like I was coming out of the blue I did find three lots that's doing uh, what I wanted to do within a few hundred yards of the property <clears throat> and I would like to present them uh, lot six of nearly sub is a smaller lot than mine and it has two mobile homes that was installed within a year <clears throat> I'm assuming they went through this process I don't know but <clears throat> about a year ago or less they put three mobile homes on two lots two of them was on a lot that was 100 by 161.8 with a total square footage of 16,108 and they're zoned 
R2. That's, <clears throat> that's one road over. Basically, looking through the woods, you can see it. Then I found uh, lot seven on Kaufman Sub. Has two mobile homes <clears throat> on a lot with 100 foot of road frontage, but it's 400 foot deep, zoned R2. And I also found in lot eight of Kaufman Sub, both of those are next to Phillips Road, uh, <clears throat> a lot with a home and two mobile homes with 100 foot of road frontage, zoned R2. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Any questions or comments from Mr. Brown? Mr. Connor, can we verify any of these things that he's telling us? I mean, or do we know that they t to be true or um, <coughs> I brought I, the assessments? I, I don't <coughs> believe that I could verify it at this second. Okay. Um, well, but we, the reason we I'm, could. I'm, I'm asking that question to staff to see if y'all had already discussed that. If you haven't, that's that's fine. But in a lot of cases, these these it, there's some other issues that are different. For instance, the one previous to us was about a family, uh, you know, a family uh, member coming coming on a property. And asking for a variance, you're asking for a, a, a mobile home for you to for profit rental. Yes. It's a different situation altogether. Right. So, although you're comparing it to some other property dimensions, right? All of these were rental properties. I'm sorry, I didn't state that. Yes, these were all rental properties. I know. Uh, I know. On Fontenot Road, one road over, because we had a zoning case come out and went back or uh, looked at those streets back there. It's zoned different. They were kind of grandfathered in because of some small lots, and they did have some crowding back there. So you're probably correct, but it's a different situation. Different set, this different set of ordinances now. Is that right? Pardon? Different. We're under we're under different ordinances now. I guess on this area, yes. In this on Phillips Lane. Yes, sir, Mr. Taylor. I noticed <laughs> on the pot plan, you show uh, two two vehicle carports existing now. Yes, uh, <clears throat> never any of course, y'all have an overview. I don't know if y'all can call that up. It's uh, you can see it, it's right behind the rent house, it's for the house there. It's kind of hard to see on y'all's, uh, but uh, yeah, there's one now that's basically the kind you see for like seven, eight hundred dollars. You see with a metal frame, two car carport. And I was, I'm assuming you're asking about the installation, I was planning on putting another one so they'd have covered parking along with. The uh, mobile home. So it's not existing right now, that second car. Not the second one, no. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, yes, Ms. Wallace. If I could clarify, um, Ms. Tun and her infinite experience and knowledge, <laughs> she did point out that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on Neely Road, y'all did approve a, um, a zoning hearing there recently. Yeah, that's correct. That's, uh, but they already had some grandfathered in <laughs> right next door that were similar to it. Right. <coughs> I remember. Uh, I have a Jeffrey Ledoux. We felt, would you please step to the mic, sir, and state your name and address? <clears throat> My name is uh, Jeff Ledoux. I live at 508 Phillips Road in Westlake, Louisiana. Um, I, I came up here, I was kind of caught off guard a few days ago when I came home at a zoning hearing sign uh, at the end of my driveway. Um, we're really not very excited about Mr. Brown trying to put a trailer basically directly adjacent from our house. Uh, we do own the property. We live there, raising our children there. I'm not exactly thrilled about having a mobile home on the property with us. And uh, that's basically what I came here to say. I asked that it be denied. Is that your house? On the yes, that's the White House in the back side. And he, where he's planning to put his, uh, his mobile home would be directly Across from staring out my kitchen and living room windows. Yes, Mr. Navarre. That, <clears throat> is that a street or is that a private drive? That's a private drive. It's actually, he owns up to the center of it and we own the other, the other side of it. We uh, basically share ownership of the driveway. You share servitude to your property. Right. Hmm. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Lidl. Thank you. I need a motion. Motion for approval. Second. I got a motion for approval from Mr. Navarro, second <coughs> from Mr. Doucette. Let's have a roll call vote, please. Chair John Duhon? No. Ms. Brown? No. Mr. Doucette? No. Mr. Williams? No. Mr. Taylor? No. Mr. Porsche? No. Ms. Cobb? No. Mr. Baker? No. Mr. Connor? No. Mr. Navarre? No. Mr. Gilry? No. 11 against. 
Motion fails unanimously. <clears throat> Next is to take appropriate action on number nine, a revision of RZ02-045-97, a request by Aaron Natale to remove stipulation two that the development be limited to monogram shop and a hair uh, salon uses only at 5611 Highway 14 East in Ward 2. Ms. Wallace. This property is located in Homewood and encompasses one acre of C2 General Commercial Zone property. In October of 1997, the property was rezoned from C2 General Commercial to R2 Mixed Residential to allow a manufactured home to be placed at this location for rental purposes. In 2007, the property owners came back to us and asked for the property to be reverted to C2 General Commercial to allow a monogram shop and a hair salon. There were two buildings placed on the property, one for each business. And at the time of that rezoning, the police jury and the planning and zoning board stipulated that the uses had to be the hair salon and the monogram shop. So the petitioner at this time would like to allow his aunt to operate a driver's education school out of one of those buildings. And in order to do that, um, the police jury and the planning and zoning board have to remove that stipulation that was placed on there. The staff recommends that the request be granted. Any questions or comments? I got a motion from Mrs. Cobb. Second. A second from Mr. Doucette. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes unanimously. <clears throat> Next, number 10, take appropriate action on case RZ03-009-10, a request by Michael Babineau to rezone from C1 uh, light commercial to C2 general commercial to allow commercial development, a mechanic shop at 2930 uh, Highway 171, Ward 3. <coughs> Wallace? This property is located in the Old Town area and encompasses seven and a half acres. The petitioners would like to rezone the property from C1 Light Commercial to C2 General Commercial to allow mechanic shop at this location. And there is currently a mechanic shop operating here and it has been operating for about three years. It was not in compliance. The owner did not have a, um, an occupational license, and he just found out after one of our inspectors advised him that he needed a license, and, and that's how we came to this zoning hearing. The <coughs> staff does recommend that the request be granted with uh, the following stipulations, that the development adhere to the site plan on file, that an occupational license be obtained within 10 days of zoning approval, and that there be no storage of junk vehicles on site. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> so he still don't have an occupational license. He, he won't be able to get the occupational license until after the police jury approves the rezoning. Now, are those junk cars on there now? Um, yeah. I, I can't really speak as to the condition of the cars, if they're junk cars or if they're there for repair. I, I'm not there's sure. There's a salvage yard across the street, so there's a lot right across the street. They've, they've <clears> had, you know, salvage cars for years and years. Uh, there they've run a couple of businesses out of that shop used to do some fiberglass and whatever it's been there for years and years also <clears throat> I guess they just started doing mechanical work recently it's our understanding they've been doing mechanic work for three years at least three years okay any other questions or comments motion for approval I got a motion for approval from Mr. <coughs> Doucette a second from Mr. Taylor all in favor state aye, aye. aye. opposed passes unanimously <clears throat> Um, Mr. Chair, just very quickly, if I could just remind everybody that re all the rezonings tonight will go to the police jury on December 16th. Yep. Thank you. She was stating if it's a rezoning case, all exceptions, variances are final tonight, but rezoning w do have to be approved by the police jury on Thursday night, yes. 530. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, number 11, take uh, appropriate action on case EX03-029-10, a request by Sugandi Development and Enterprises for a zoning exception to allow commercial development of contractor's office at 2413 Glen Prairie Street in Ward 3. Ms. Wallace. At uh, your November 16th meeting, you all took action to uh, deny the request of Mr. Sugandi. And um, you had asked us to look into whether there was a legally existing structure at this location prior to this new construction that um, has been built there. And we did send you in your packets um, a couple pictures of the construction as well as some aerial photography. Um, you have up at the top of each photograph the date. 
So this picture was taken uh, earlier this year in 2010. And uh, it's clear to see in this photograph that there was just a slab at the location. It, it was probably in about January of this year that those photos were taken. And then we have 2008, which is a similar uh, photograph, although it looks like there was some type of portable carport type building that was on the slab or, or very near it. But there still in 2008 doesn't appear to be a permanent structure that was at this location. We also gave you 2004 photographs and uh, 1998, and none of those photos show a permanent structure. So with all that being said, the, the staff does feel that at this time, um, the entire structure should be removed to comply with your action on November 16th. Um, you may want to um, determine a time frame now for when that demolition has to take place. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. I do also have in front of you a, a memo that states what, what I just told you. And I also have some photos attached to that. We had an inspector go out to the location just to see if there were any code violations. <coughs> and uh, he did give a, an inspection report that notes a few things that would have to be done to bring it in compliance if for some reason it, it was not torn down. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. And just to refresh your memory, we voted on all that last week, and we, we denied his request. And then when we got to the uh, part about tearing it down, there were some questions about the legality, which the, the staff uh, did some investigation and investigated for. You have a comment, Mr. Connor? Yeah, I want to clarify. We denied his request, but we also, our vote, I think, was to have the thing torn down within 90 days. And basically what we did was defer um, I guess moving forward with that action. So we have a pending motion passed to have it tore down in 90 days. Uh, this is a question, I guess, just to clarify. We have a, a, a motion that has um, uh, been passed to tear out the thing down in 90 days. We just deferred taking, starting the clock on that 90 days, I guess. Wait. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if I could. Uh, yes, Mr. Smith. You're correct. What happened was, <clears throat> after you all decided to deny his request and have it torn down, he made a claim that he had built around a pre-existing structure. And the question was, if there was a pre-existing structure, then what did we do then? Did we let him have the pre-existing structure, tear down what he had around it? So you all deferred it until this meeting. Uh, and your only question, I think, before us tonight, since it has turned out that there was no existing structure, and you have already voted to deny his request. The only thing before you, I think, is the amount of time that you will allow him to go on and tear the structure down. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> is there someone here from the Building Inspection Department in the audience? Yes. Would you uh, briefly uh, step to the mic and uh, <coughs> tell us about the things that need to be addressed, please? Do you have a copy in front of you? Do you need a copy? Oh, here you go, Jerry. Wallace. <coughs> Please state your name, sir. My name is Jerry LeBlanc, building <coughs> inspector of Calcasieu Parish. Mm. Uh, did you want to ask me a question to answer? Uh, or what I'd you... like you to do is just tell us. I see four items here. Would you please uh, just tell us the things that was needed to be done? Well, first of all, the foundation, we have no, uh, we have no idea what this structure is sitting on as far as the foundation is concerned. If you look at the pictures, uh, there's... It looks it seems to be some very old concrete. If we have, yeah. I can't tell you as a building inspector how old this concrete is, but we're concerned about the the foundation holding this structure up. And then, if you'll notice, we have we have posts, wooden posts, in uh, virtually going into the dirt. I don't know if there's any concrete around that, but that's totally totally against the code right there. In order for the foundation to be any kind of acceptable, I would recommend that uh, that he gets an engineer possibly to uh, do some surveying or testing to see if the foundation would be suitable to hold his structure up and then design something for the uh, part of the, the building that the, uh, that the wooden post are in. Exterior walls, laminated beams. Uh, 
I'm not an engineer, engineer or an architect, but there's a lot of attention needed on the, if you look at the picture number, let me see where we at. Where it says girders. It seems that we've got studs sitting on top of uh, wooden trusses that ho has r virtually no support. We would recommend that, uh, again, an engineer or architect redesign that particular area. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted it for the record. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Yes, sir. Mr. Navarro, you had a comment? I have a question for Mr. LeBlanc. Okay. Have you ever inspected any of the work that he's no, sir. done? No, sir. There's nothing, no inspection whatsoever. He has he has a, a commercial, he has a license to operate in Cockshoe Parish. Has he, has he got any permits from on any jobs he's ever done? Um, I'm not sure any, but I know on this job he did not get a permit. That's all. I'm at. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to ask him that. Mr. Sagani, would you please step to the mic, state your name and address? Yes. My name is David Sugandi. Uh, my address is 2413 Glen Prater Street, Lake Charles 70605. Hey, Mr. Varr, would you like to restate that question, please? Yes, sir. You have a, you have a commercial uh, uh, permit to do business in Cockshoe Parish? Yes, sir. License. Also a state. And have you done any business in Cockshoe Parish? Yes, sir. Several times. Have you gotten permits for those businesses? All the time, yes, sir. But on this time, the case is a little bit different. I try to get the permit several times. Uh, matter of fact, the last time I talked to this young fine lady, I'm not sure, Miss um, Miss uh, Wallace, I guess, I don't know, Tammy, maybe, I don't know. But um, she uh, she denied because, you know, uh, I talked to Miss Dana, Miss, uh, there's two ladies that works there in the front office. The reason why I didn't get the permit at the time because it's required for me to have the elevation certificate. Now, uh, I know I mentioned it last year, the previous meeting. I mean, I know it's, uh, I should have known better. You know, I should not build anything before, you know, I get the permit. But since, you know, I'm working at also as a teacher, uh, I didn't have much time. I only do it on the weekend. But um, now I just got the permit, uh, not, not the permit, the elevation certificate, like I think about three weeks ago or something like that. And um, uh, Ms. Wallace denied it because, you know, I couldn't get it because, you know, the zoning, uh, I guess she mentioned that the zoning said it's basically is denied. So, you know, we have to wait until when. I'm not really sure when, uh, but, you know. So you just don't worry about the law, just do what you want to do then? No, sir. As let, soon as I got... Let me ask you a question. On the, on the, on the, on the, you said you have, you've received permits on jo other jobs you have done. Has yes, the inspector sir. went out there and inspected your work? Yes, sir. You can check. Uh, I did some works in Westlake. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this is back. I built a house there. And a matter of fact, uh, who's the inspector? I'm not sure. I don't remember it. Uh, but I, I did also works in Lake Charles. Uh, you can check there. I mean, uh, I'm doing legit. I mean, I, I know better because this is my house, my own house. You see, uh, uh, you know, the reason why I'm doing this, you know, I'm living in that mobile home, okay? And I have kids. I need to expand the uh the property, you know, and also I need a place to, to store it's all my stuff. And, um, you know, I have spoken to my neighbors. I mean, they don't mind uh, anything like that. But the only thing that changed at the time at this year that I got to have a flood elevation certificate before I can acquire the permit. And uh, but for some reason, you know, uh, it takes a while. I mean, I'm not saying that you can get it in one day, one week, you know, it depending on the on the person who's doing it. And uh, I got that permit, I got that certificate, I turned it into the uh, permit office, but, and, uh, and then Miss Dana said, okay, you're doing fine, I and mean, then just bring it back whenever you're ready. But all, uh, all of a sudden, this fine lady said, deny it because I have no clue. I mean, this is why I'm be, I've been fighting it. And also, I'll, I've been doing, you know, I've been talking to my neighbors, you know, 
they're not here. Basically, they're saying that, you know, I, I'm not opposing. If I'm opposing, then I'll be here. And I think this is going to be a good asset for the, for the, you know, community. It's all about moving forward, building it. Okay, I'll do my job. I'll do it the best I can do to get it up to code, you know, whatever it takes. And, you know, I guess in this case is whatever the, uh, the code is, 2006 International Residential Code. I mean, I have no problem with that. But as far as getting the permit, I'm trying, you know, I know, I know I need to get a permit, but, I mean, I can't get a permit. I mean, you know, now after I, after I got all my certificate, turned it in. You did and what it, you did was illegal. What uh, you did when you started building that, you were, that, that is illegal. Uh, That's all I think. I don't have any more questions. Do you sit? Sir, I have a question <clears throat> for you. Sure. You made a comment, and I admire your, you know, your zeal, but you're going to build a home to put your kids in now the key to every home is the foundation yes you have no that was a a parking pad so it's probably only three inches thick three and no. a half no sir well, that was six inches no, thick you have no way to prove that it was there i can prove time. it i can take a picture that foundation is six inches thick on the other side and still all not enough for a home still not enough to build a two-story structure on that's a two-story structure you have going there and that six inches is not enough. Okay. I but built, it's my turn, sir. You've, you've spoken for five minutes. Okay. It's not enough. That foundation is not good enough for you putting that structure on. And just from the few pictures that our inspection department has given us, I, I don't see how you can fix it. Uh, I mean, I hate to tell you this, but I, I just can't allow in good faith something like that to be built. Not saying you're not a good a good builder, but this is not a good example of you don't want to advertise with this. If you're looking to do this as a business, this is not something you want to throw forward and say this is how I do work. It needs to be done better. In my opinion, that needs to be torn down, and it should have been torn down a long time ago. Yes, Mr. That's Connor. I want to clarify something. You, you, I think you're under the impression that once you received your elevation certificate, that that was going to allow you to receive get your permit, but we didn't, we didn't deny your, is that right? We didn't deny your request last month because you didn't have an elevation certificate. We denied it for other reasons. So the elevation certificate that you have now does not entitle you to a permit. We denied based on the fact that you're building a commercial facility or a structure in a residential neighborhood, and that's what you needed the, the, the variance for, and you didn't get that. So the elevation certificate, I just want to clarify because I think that's what you're trying to say to us. So. And let me, uh, yes, Ms. Wallace, <coughs> you want to say something first? If I could just clarify, when, when I spoke with Mr. Sugandi a couple of weeks ago, it, it's my understanding from speaking with him that at some point in this process, he did speak with our permit supervisor about what he would need to get a permit. And at that time, she advised him that he would need an elevation certificate. And I did explain to him then that, that we didn't need the elevation certificate because you all had denied his request. So he and I have had that discussion. <coughs> And just for clarification, <clears throat> the parish allows you to operate a business out of your home as long as it's confined in your home. I'm sure there's a lot of contractors in Lake Charles area that have a home and keep their tools in their building and some of their supplies, but it's maintained within their residence or their garage or whatever, which I don't know if you planned on doing that or not, but when you came saying you were going to conduct, uh, construct a uh, some, a business and then a secondary home, it looked like you were doing it in reverse rather than, rather than it being an extension of your home, your home was an extension of your business is what it appeared to be. You had a comment, sir? Um, yeah, to answer uh, Mr. Doucette's questions right there, uh, I don't have the picture, I'm not really sure. I mean, I totally understand that if six inches thick slab is not gonna hold two story, I agree with that. But I'm not, I can't, I can't explain it to you the way it's set up, I don't have a picture. But to answer that, I'm acting as an owner. I'm acting as the, you know, uh, contractors, also the architects, designers. Okay, that slab is the interior wall. Okay, it's not really the outside of the uh, the load bearing wall. I'm saying the post itself. And the post itself, to clarify that with the inspection, I dig the ground two feet at least minimum. Okay, and I pour cement on the bottom and 
and I pour dirt on top of it. But you know, in addition, later on, I'm going to enclose that, you know, with uh, with the the wall itself, with the stud sticking up. That just like you know, that's the reason why I put four by six in there to match up with my wall, which is two by four. Okay, I know myself. I'm not going to build my own house out of six inches thick. I know that for sure, for a fact. I'm a contractor. I know that it doesn't take rocket scientists to figure it out. I mean, you know, to answer your question, I mean, I mean, I, I can't verify that without looking at it. I mean, I have a, I have a, you know, software. I can, I can show it to you, but I don't know how I can, you know, well, prove it. At this point, it's not relevant. Uh, no. At this point. Uh, what we need to do is establish where our last discussion we had was to, uh, to take the building down, but we did not establish a timetable because of the fact that uh, Mr. Smith said there may be some questions. Yes, Mr. Connor. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion here in just a second, but I, I, I want to say, too, on, on your issues about the slab. It seems from the inspector's reports that there's, a, there's other deficiencies that whether we gave you a permit or not, uh, it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to go forward with this particular structure to get it completed anyway. So I don't think we'd be doing you a favor by giving you a permit. You're just going to be spending money. I move that we go forward with our action that we took last meeting to um, have the building tore down in 90 days. Second. I got a motion from Mr. Connor and a second from Mr. Doucette that the building be removed in 90 days. Let's have a roll call vote, please. If, if I could, Mr. Chair, can we just clarify if that's 90 days from today's date or 90 days from November 16th? Mr. Connor. Today's date. 90 days from today's date. I got a question. How long did it take you to, to put that building up? To I know you're a finish teacher. Finish it up? I know you're a teacher, so. No, I'm not. A, well, I just put resignation, you know, as of December 16. Uh, but I will do my best. Uh, okay. To finish the job? I mean, like, to no, complete. No, no, no. Uh, no. I was just wondering how much time it was going to take you to tear it down if you're a teacher that means you're working Monday through Friday you only have the weekends I'm not gonna tear it down I mean you know but <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll are. try my best to you know not to tear it down I mean I mean I'll, I'll take whatever to get it up to code I mean even the foundation I mean you know it's I mean to me I mean I can verify that with the engineer or anything like that I mean that will sufficient enough to support those building that building has been sitting there for at least three months we have sir. a strong winds sir we got up I think I don't know that and I understand believe me it's tough for you I believe I understand I empathize with you but <clears throat> what we're telling you is that you cannot build this structure on your property and as a board I wasn't here for the last meeting but they made a decision that you need to tear this down all the inspector did was verify for us what we already knew that we didn't want the structure there and all the inspector did for us is give us more reasons why we don't want the structure there. So not only was it something that wasn't coded properly as far as our residential, commercial within a residential, they told you no based on that. And then we just got more information reemphasizing why the structure shouldn't be there. So we're, we're about to vote on you having to remove this structure in 90 days. I think what my colleague's question was, how long did it take you to put it like it is now? How long has it taken you to get that structure just like it is now? Six months? A year? How long have you been working on it to get it just like it is? One week? Mm -hmm. okay. one you week built that build building in one week up to where it is right now? Yes, sir. Well, in 90 days, you ought to be able to tear it down then. I got a motion on the floor and a second. Uh, roll call, please. Okay, we vote yes is what? Vote no. A vote yes would be to tear it down in 90 days. <coughs> All we're voting on is a timeline. Yes. Ready? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Doucette? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Taylor? <coughs> yes. Mr. Porsche? Yes. Ms. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Navarre? Yes. Mr. Gilry? Yes. Chair Duhon? Yes. Unanimous. Yeah, unanimous. You have to remove it in 90 days. Now, apparently you want to build something there, and I don't know if you want to continue not after you tear this down. But if you do, please come see one of our, bonus, uh, our zoning staff members 
and follow it step by step. You got to go through their suggestions. And they make good suggestions. They're going to take care of you. But you got to follow it through their steps and make sure you do it right. So you don't have to go through this again if you decide to do it after you bring it down, if you decide to build something else. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next on the agenda is the election of officers for next year. I'm going to recuse myself and let Mr. Vickers take over so we'll switch chairs. <coughs> Okay, the chair will entertain nominations for chairman. I've got a motion to elect Mr. Doucette chairman. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to elect Mr. Doucette chairman. Are there any other nominees? Uh, being no other nominees, we'll move to close the uh, recommendations. Uh, are there any objections? <coughs> being no objections, motion stands passed. Doucette. Elect the vice chairman. <laughs> now we have to elect a vice chairman. I recommend Mr. Connor. I second it. That's it. I got a second. Any other nominations? None. None. Mr. Connor, any objections? Mr. Connor, you're vice chairman. <laughs> All right, we took care of that. Next on the agenda. Is, uh, is devised that the next regularly scheduled planning and zoning meeting will be held Tuesday, January the 18th, 2010 in the Plushier meeting room at 530. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn.